I think after my last video, I might have gotten into serious trouble. After my mother watched the video, she sent me a WhatsApp voice note. And all she said was, eh, okay, I see. Thank you very much. Right now, I'm scared. I need somebody to go with me to beg my mother for forgiveness. Speaking of forgiveness, I remember one time I went for confession. And of course, as usual, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. You know, it's been about one month since I made my last confession. These are my sins. And I told him my sins. And the father was quiet. I became nervous and I added, for these and those I have forgotten, I regret and I'm truly sorry. And the father was still quiet. About 30 seconds later, he looked at me and said, so why did you do them? I said, excuse me. He asked me, did you know they were wrong? I said, yes, father. Then why did you do them? I said, father, I, I, I don't know. He said, wait, so you are telling me that you knew they were wrong? and you still did them all the same. At that point, I was broken. I said, yes, father, but, but. Then he looked at me once again. He smiled and he said, God still loves you. Hello and welcome to the second Archangel. Going for confession is about one of the hardest things to do as a Catholic. I remember there was a time where I traveled from my home parish to another church just to go for confession. You can imagine that is how hard it can be to go for confession. But then as Christians, we know the importance of forgiveness of our sins. We know how important it is that we constantly go to God and ask him for forgiveness. I mean, Jesus Christ underscored this when before he did some of his miracles, he would forgive them their sins and then heal them. Because he knows that bodily healing is good, you know, it's great, it's wonderful and all that. But there was another kind of healing that was even more necessary. And that is healing of the soul, you know, reconciling the soul back to God. Jesus Christ knew that we could go to our rooms, close our windows and our doors and speak to our Heavenly Father in heaven and ask him for forgiveness for our sins. But in John chapter 20 verse 23, he still tells them, you know, that you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Whosoever sins you forgive are forgiven them, and those you retain are retained. Why would Jesus Christ say this? I am not asking because I know the answer. I am asking because I actually do not know. But one thing I know is that he gave that authority to his disciples. His disciples gave it to their successors, and it has gone down so much, and now our priests have the authority to listen to our sins, to forgive them, and to be forgiven in heaven, and to retain them, and they will be retained in heaven. I was reading around and I met this interesting statement. It says, when you confess your sins to God, your sins are forgiven. When you confess your sins to the priest, your guilt load is taken away. And it's actually true. You see, the priest is there, but not on his own accord. He is there in persona Christi, in the person of Christ. Meaning when he tells you that I absolve you of your sins, it's actually Jesus Christ telling you, I absolve you of your sins. In the confessional, you get to hear Jesus Christ speak to you directly and tell you your sins are forgiven. You know, in the confessional, the priest is not there to judge you. He is there to help you acknowledge and appreciate the, the, the volume, the, the mass, the, how huge the love of God is, how huge the mercy of God is, like in my case in the confessional. For those who have been to confession before, you can attest to this when I say that you go to confession with so much embarrassment, so much guilt and sin, but you come out and you feel so free. You feel like a burden has been taken away from you. I mean, the confessional is not just a psychological healing place, but even that psychological healing comes with spiritual healing. You go with a lot of burden, you come back free and all smiley. You feel like you are never going to sin again. Additionally, in the confessional, the priest admonishes you. He gives you advice. He gives you some tidbits on how you can avoid particular sins. Some priests are actually that good. When you apply what they are saying, you realize that you are not doing this sin as frequently as you used to do it before. The interesting thing is when you go for confession, you get to realize a particular sin that you keep committing and the frequency with which you commit it. I mean, and for those who go to particular priests, like you have a confessor, it's even more interesting because now you get to tell him the same thing over and over and over again and you begin to feel like, now nah, I think it's time I stop. In conclusion, all that I'm saying is this. Confession is hard. It's hard to go for confession because you feel like you're going to be embarrassed. You feel like the priest is going to think something about you. I want to assure you that anything you say in the confessional remains in the confessional because of the seal of secrecy that a priest is bound to. However, what you get from the confessional 
far outweighs what you go there with. It outweighs your embarrassment. You get freedom, freedom from your guilt. You get freedom from your sin. You get to hear Jesus Christ tell you, I forgive you your sins. So for those who are afraid of going for confession and for those who are just hesitant, I want to assure you that there's so much to gain from there. I hope after watching this video, you get a change of heart. You go for confession. You feel the kind of freedom that comes with being in Jesus Christ. Personally, I think I need to go for confession again. Yeah, I need to do that. Thank you very much for watching to the end. I will see you in my next video. Peace.